job accessories and gunsmithing tools. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Exceptional Conservative Show. I'm your host, the Exceptional One, Kevin McClinton. I am completely excited about this particular evening because we have with us a tremendous star. Uh, I believe a great star amongst the conservative. Uh, one who is well able to present the principles of conservatism and Christianity. Uh, and as well, make it look good too. Anne-Marie Merrill, founder of Politichicks. Uh, at the Politichicks uh, on Twitter and as well, Politichicks.com. Uh, Anne-Marie, uh, you have been a part of the conservative movement for a while. And we finally had with us a man who was virtually what we wanted. Someone who wasn't going to be a sycophant for the, for the right. Um, someone who wasn't going to just take it on the chin and turn their other cheek. We had someone who was fighting back, and his name was Donald John Trump. And they virtually threw everything they could at him, and he kept winning. And then all of a sudden, about January 31st, uh, they threw the kitchen sink at him. And I want to ask you right here, uh, did you expect that to happen? Did I expect it? I didn't expect it to be a virus that was going to, I know I didn't expect this. I knew yeah. they were going to find, I knew they were going to keep doing something, but I didn't, I wasn't expecting something like this, where it would be something global where kind of the entire world was working against him or all of his global enemies. But this is definitely something orchestrated and, and being funded, I believe, by the global media. The, the fear, especially, that's being induced in the panic that, that's happening, we're seeing, and it's worldwide, and it is carefully being orchestrated. And the, the only thing that, I, that I'm finding that's real that's terrifying to me is that President Trump is, he's, he's actually shutting down businesses too. So there's something real here. So this virus is real, but all of the panic and all of the other stuff, I believe was, was not. So it, it's everything, there's so many crazy things. I know you're hearing crazy things from all of your sources, yeah. but it's hard to keep up. It's changing hourly. I mean, I'm hearing really my top high up sources crazy things that I don't necessarily want to believe, and then I'm hearing from another different different kind of side of other things. And I'm, I'm just trying, as with everything that I do in my life, especially with what what we have to do when when it comes to talking to the public. Where I end up doing is I I stop right? and I and I just keep following be still and know I'm God, and I keep looking up. When I get so caught up in all of these stories, and it's almost like a tornado right now, because when everything is changing, you're hearing all these voices, I'm just praying for discernment right now, because it can get scary Yeah. when it gets something this, this huge. But this is something, why it, what I'm also hearing from the, the, what the leftists are saying, and I don't know if you saw today, trending number two on Twitter, Trump lied, people died. I said this a couple of days ago. I said, this is going to start, what they're going to start saying is Trump lied, people died. And sure enough, today it was trending, and I was sick when I saw that. Mm. But I knew they were going to start saying this. This is his war. This is, this is Trump. When they used to say Bush lied, people died. 
this is what they're doing. This is the way they're going to be able to pin bodies on Trump, and they're doing it. And and they're trying. They're blaming Trump for a virus. And and I knew this was going to happen as soon as I saw this. So it, it's uh, yeah, it's frustrating. It is very frustrating. I can't hear this in my voice all the time. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, you know, the only reason I ever have you come on the air is when there are very big emotional times like this. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I believe it's a real virus, and I had doubts about it even being real for a while. And I was, yeah. I was almost, I was saying, and I actually posted on my page on Monday on several pages on Instagram and everything. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna isolate. I'm taking my 83 year old mother out. We're gonna go. And now I'm like, okay, this is actually a real virus that we don't have. Um, we can't, if, if my mother gets this, there's not an antibiotic that we can give her and she could die. So I do have to be careful now. So I actually yeah. have to retract that because this is something that's out there, but there's only three people anywhere near me that have it. So, yeah. so there's so yeah. much fear. See, but then who's buying up all the toilet paper? Exactly. Like, okay, that's something else altogether. Uh, Amory, I, I, who's buying up all the medical supplies? China. <laughs> ex exactly, yeah. Amory. We had uh, Josie uh, Cruz, uh, who's running against Hank Johnson in Georgia's congressional fourth district of Georgia, uh, Georgia's fourth congressional district, uh, and she's from Venezuela, naturalized citizen, and she yeah. was expressing exactly what it was like to grow up in Venezuela uh, under. Uh, Maduro and and the uh, other dictators of that time period, and she mentioned the empty shelves. There's no bread. There's no milk. There's a special day that you go and you have a special stamp that you use. And oh my God, you walk into a Walmart, which is the one of the greatest, most efficient systems of produce and anything you want, you can find at a Walmart. But you can't find milk, you can't find bread, you can't find food uh, in the Walmart. It's is I'm believing that that was purposeful as well, uh, in the sense of individuals Absolutely. showing yeah. us what communism and socialism would be like. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know what? Another thing that that interesting to me it, that happened so fast. Yes, it looked like. It was orchestrated almost. It's like the people that that were trying to make this happen. It's like everything was gone off the shelves, and that induced fear and panic. And it's like when people started saying that things were gone, it's like when I was saying in California, anytime there's an earthquake, everybody freaks out. Everybody goes out, buries a whole bunch of stuff, and then things calm down, and then people don't buy it anymore. Then things, then it goes back to normal. This, though, right now, it's like people were doing it before the earthquake happened. <laughs> it's like it wasn't even that widespread yet. Mm -hmm. it, there were only 70 deaths in the United States at the time. 22,000 from October to, to March 1st, I think, just been the regular flu. The people weren't freaking out and buying all the toilet paper then. And you get more things from the regular flu that you need toilet paper for than coronavirus. So it's, I was like, why this? But it's almost like, it's like if people see people goods are leaving, there's a reason for that. And it signals, it signals fear. And it's the total fear signals. Exactly. It's it just it's something that's just something else. Yeah. Now, and there's something else going on here in addition to this. You know, they're going to lock us both away because they're going to say that we're conspirators, that we're conspiratorial theorists. I know. Uh, and that I know. this is, Ken, uh, Amory, listen, you're, you're, you're going off the gravy train here. You don't understand stuff happens in mm -hmm. life or whatever. But for some odd reason, America went from being a free market capitalist, constitutional, rule of law, individual, sovereign, Christian, conservative country to literally Cuba in four weeks. Yep. 
and they're telling us yeah. that there is no coordination of this anywhere, including uh, mm -hmm. Russia and Saudi Arabia now suppressing oil prices to the point that they are causing America's great fuel companies to literally shut down their operations of producing oil and gas. And that we are hearing reports that we will have unemployment rates of anywhere between 20 and 30 percent by the end of June, literally a great depression. And that this is not coordinated. Yeah. Am I off the reservation here? Uh, it, it, it's, it, do and you? And also, a yeah. lot of these Democrat cities, they're, they're releasing their prisoners to why in the world would they need to do that? Why in the world would they need to start? They're already doing that in, where was it? In, not Baltimore, but one of those facilities. They were, they're releasing prisoners. Why are they doing that? It's like, it's like Gotham. You know, yes. it's like Gotham. Exactly. They're doing this to, to cause chaos. And then the police, like this happened today in Texas. I just found out right before I got on the phone with you, one of my friends, they had a conference call. I'm in Texas. If the governor, Governor Abbott, Friday, they're going to stop. The police aren't going to pull people over. They're going to stop pulling people over. So, oh, and, oh. And, now, and, and also, like misdemeanors, they're not going to get in trouble anymore. And all these teenagers that are out of school, that, hello, it's going to be chaos. And Governor Abbott is a big Republican governor here in Texas. This is not going to fly well. And Larry, Larry Hogan. The law anywhere is going to be really, really bad. Exactly. Larry Hogan, governor of Maryland, who shut down the churches on Sunday. I, I mean... I, I'm not. I'm not expecting Republicans to surrender to the panic or surrender to the to the chaos that's been created. But it appears that the most calm people in all of this chaos happen to be the Democrats, and they're getting everything they suddenly wanted uh, in terms of keeping people in, in complete paranoia uh, and anxiety. Now, you're taking care of an 83-year-old mom, and I know that it must be quite disconcerting um, because, you know, amongst all the other issues that you face uh, as you age, uh, a laboratory-induced virus from Wuhan, China, is not one of those things that you want to face. What things are people telling you to do with your 83-year-old mom at this point? Well, just to keep her indoors and to isolate. And, and with me, with multiple sclerosis, the same thing. And multiple sclerosis by itself isn't the problem, but the drug that I take for it is it's called Oprimus. And it literally, one of the main side effects is that I'm very, very susceptible to my, my immune system breaks down. And right after I take it, I, I have to go into I self-isolate for three weeks because I'm so susceptible to, to disease and uh, to anything. Um, and now I had the last infusion in December. So I'm okay right now. And I, I, I've been healing from that last infusion. But I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what could happen. But we, my, my father, though, is in memory care. And I, he's in lockdown. I, I can't go visit him at all. And so that's, that's something else I'm concerned about. Because exactly. I'm not able to visit, I mean, I, that, that happened on Monday, that I'm not able to even see him at all. What? And he can't really talk anymore, so I can't call him. Wow. So it's, it's difficult. Extremely, yeah. extremely difficult for I, families. I have to trust. Yeah. I, I'm looking up, Ken, more exactly. than anything else. I, I don't know who to trust right now. I'm, I, I hope to God literally that that president trump is being advised correctly i really do because because you're right the democrats are getting pretty much everything they want that senate bill um, i hope the senate doesn't sign it and we'll have all the, the extra abortion crap in it because they claim they want to save lives 
Hello. Yeah, exactly. It's so funny to me that they that they want to tax this bill to save lives, but it includes <laughs> all the Planned Parenthood money to kill lives. <laughs> exactly. I, you have to laugh. It, it's it's not funny, but it's oh preposterous. Exactly. It's, they're just it's super oh. silly. It's in fact, and <laughs> and when you when you think of the fact that churches are closed, uh, homeless shelters yeah. are closed or are locked down. But Planned Parenthood clinics are open. That kind of gives you the idea of where we are in this particular country. Now, in yeah, in in finality, as as we close out here with you, because I really, really appreciate you spending time with us tonight, Anne Marie. I, I want to ask you this final question: um, Will we recover as a nation from this? Will Donald Trump have victory over this? Will we? have an election in November in which Donald Trump is victorious? I am going to pray steadfastly, yes. Now, Morgan and I opened for him in, in, in 2016 in Nashville, and so I, I've met him several times, and he has really been amazing and a wonderful wonderful i think the best president of our generation maybe, maybe up there with with washington um i i really hope and pray that the only problem is i've seen americans have a very short-term memory and after this is over and this will be over but with with 401ks lost with unemployment numbers that are going to tank we may be in a recession we may be in a depression after this they're going to look at the leader, and 24-7 media is going to say, this is Donald Trump's fault. The problem is short-term memory. They may not remember why this happened. They're going to say, this happened, and he can't fix it. That's what I worry about, and all of this is going to be coming to full fruition right around the elections. So yeah. we're going to have to hope and pray. He's a great businessman. If anyone can get out of this, it's Donald Trump. You know, what's really sad to think about is that there are those who are willing, absolutely willing, to see their brethren suffer so that they might be right in yes. their own eyes. And that is incredulous and malevolent at the same time. It's, 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 un, it's inhuman for people to act in such a fashion. Yeah. And I want you all to know, I'm going to give you just a few words here. Uh, Chinese flu, Wuhan China flu, yeah, I said it, and I'm a racist. I don't mind being one. Uh, <laughs> you have to know where, isn't that sick? the communist China flu. The communist China flu. They sent it, and the Democrats received yeah. it, and they're well with it. Uh, I, I want to talk with you tonight real quick. Um, <laughs> Because you have always been a great blessing to TECN TV uh, and the women that have worked at TECN TV. And I want to give you the opportunity to speak of a young woman that we introduced to you um, this weekend, in fact. And you made something very special out of her. Can you tell us who that woman is? Dr. Jane. <laughs> I am so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited that she's going to be a politician. She's going to be a contributor for us. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm so excited. And hopefully Morgan's going to be able to do her show on Monday, I think. Cool. Cool. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I'm not going to be able to do it, but um, but I, I hooked up with Morgan, and hopefully Morgan's going to be able to be on. So, yes. Thank you for that. No, thank you. She's wonderful. She, she is. A chick. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jane Ruby is now a politic. Thanks to Anne Marie Murrell. Yeah. Thank you so much for all you have done um, against the communists, against the Marxists, the socialists, against the tyrants, uh, domestically <laughs> and foreign, uh, for our great country. How can people read your stuff, get to your pages, get the information that they need to know right now? to face their foes, both foreign and domestic, on these particular issues? Just go to 
thepoliticics.com. Go to our, our Facebook page, The Politics. Uh, go to my, uh, if you want to be sad, go to my personal Facebook page. Yes. That's where I post about. But <laughs> I used to be really political. Now it's mostly about multiple sclerosis and my, my, my journey with my poor parents. It's all kind of really sad. It's gotten really dark there. I also, I also, anytime I, I, I talk about sadness, I also offer hope and light and, and happy stuff too. Uh, but, and, and then I have a tweet of this, another page, Amber Grill. And then follow Morgan, um, oh gosh, I always forget her name. Morgan Brittany Four, I think, on, on Twitter, at Morgan Brittany Four, okay. or, or Morgan Brittany Actress. And, um, yeah, and, and the politics on Twitter. Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to give comfort to Anne Marie as she has given us years of comfort through politichicks.com. I ask you right now, Father God, to surround her household with your spirit and with your truth. That, Lord God, you take away any fear or any trepidation, any anxiety, and you comfort her with your Holy Spirit power, Lord God. Your resurrection power awakening her to overcome the ills and the frailties of MS and to be a stalwart for the God, for her father and for her mother. Lord God, we ask that you bless those who love her so dearly, who brought her into this world, and give her the comfort of knowing that they are with her always, as you are until the end. Lord God, I pray right now that you give a double blessing to politichicks.com, and that you meet every particular need that that organization has, and that they suffer nothing in the midst of all of this that they may come out more prosperous, more powerful, more influential, as it is thy will. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I say amen. Anne-Marie, we you. love you. We love you <laughs> yeah. dearly. And I love you. Thank you so much. Good to be back on with you. I look forward to your return. Again. God I bless. Like <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you do. God bless you. Take care now. Thank you. God bless you, too. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Anne-Marie Merle. Uh, what a great joy to have her on the program. We will be right back with more of the best in urban conservative talk. I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that you couldn't have a more prolifically wonderful friend than Anne-Marie Merle. We'll be right back. We are a republic, ladies and gentlemen, not a democracy. Remember that during this election year. You're watching TECN TV, the best in urban conservative news and talk, the exceptional conservative show.com. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, with none other than Janice Hall, the J. Hall World Report. There's so much happening in the world. We're not even talking about Turkey and Greece yet, but we should be, and we will. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Louis Giglio, and I'm sitting here with my sister, Gina. We're